Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, we are going to discuss about multi-cloud platform, what's the current situation, and what are the tools and techniques that are used professionally in the production to monitor all of our cloud services. This will give you some insight of how big, large corporate works, and what's the situation of the cloud with them, and how do they monitor all of their cloud resources, despite some of their resources might be in Azure, in AWS, and GCP, and everybody is worried about the bill. So how do these things happen in the production? Uh, we're gonna discuss with that. But before doing that, let me walk you through with the situation of the cloud right now. So you might be thinking that the cloud, we have three major player, AWS, uh, uh, of course, Amazon, we have Google, and we have Microsoft. And in case you might be, or probably the thing that I want to say is, the share of the cloud is going up and down. Uh, what do you think? Is it going up or is it going down? It depends on what kind of news resource you are consuming. On one side, you're going to get a story that the cloud resources and companies are spending too much in the cloud. And on the other side, you're going to hear a spectrum which says the cloud is going down. Some is saying cloud is going up, some is going, going say uh, the cloud is going down. But let me put you a real and original perspective of how things are happening right now in the industry. It was long in the industry that we were dependent only with the one cloud provider, majorly by Amazon. But that is not the fact anymore. Of course, the startups are still hanging on the AWS because it is easy to set, set up. You have easy access to developers who are already having a knowledge of AWS. But as you move on to the large corporate structure, the pricing really matters a lot. Not only just the pricing, you also want to take care of a couple of other things. And especially the first thing that I want to discuss here is risk diversification. So I'll walk you through with some of the resources and links that I have. But first and foremost, we want to have the risk diversification. We don't want to put all of our resources, especially when a company is at a really, really large scale. I work at one of the company, which is a unicorn in India. So we always keep on working with the things that how can we diversify our risk. We don't want to just uh, be a vendor lock-in in all the services with AWS or all the services with Azure. We want to have a mix and match of that. So if one thing goes down, we are aware of, and we can just uh, transfer the load on another service, at least as a backup, or which one is providing more developer-friendly support or maybe AI-friendly support so that we can use their services. So that's one of the things. It's no longer just one choice that we have. And not only that, sometimes if your company is global, which we consulted one of the client recently, and they wanted to have more regions to serve their clients as fast as possible. It was a video-based service, a newly-based startup. They raised recently good funds, and their priority was how can I have access to more regions? And that was not at all possible with just one cloud provider. We had to suggest then that you need to go with the multiple cloud solutions. Uh, it's not about just Azure, it's not just about GCP, you need to have that. So sometimes there are challenges in which you cannot just rely on one cloud platform. And this is the one thing that I'm study, studying quite a lot in my masters as well, that how multi-cloud platforms should be used in the, in the company itself and how they should be monitored as well. It's a really interesting thing. I'll come back more on to these things, but first let me uh, share my screen and show you some of the more interesting stuff that uh, are going to be superly impressed you. So if recently you follow up with the stock pricing and the annual report of Microsoft and Alphabet, the parent company of Google, you'll hear a couple of reports and all of that. Uh, of course, anybody who is in IT for like really long term, they are invested in one or the other company or probably both, uh, you have the stocks and shares for both of them. So look at this Yahoo Finance report. So uh, notice this, this whole thing here, which is mentioned up here. It says, if you look at Alphabet's report, uh, you'd say business are probably cutting back on spending. So on the Google side, it looks like that they are uh, cutting on the spending part. Uh, they are not giving Google as much money for Google Cloud. Remember, we are not talking about Google's ad revenue or maybe other revenue stream or anything. We're just talking about the cloud-centric part here. Uh, you know, uh, maybe they are sort of being more conservative, but then you look at Microsoft and say, oh, companies are actually spending on the cloud. So notice here, the race is not about who is leading the AI, but race is all about who is having more clients on the cloud. 
AI might be one of the reasons for attracting the clients, and it is, I'll show you that as well, but this is an interesting case study that you should really uh, spend some time on. They're spending more to business, so you can get a read of this. So this is a really long article, but I just collected some notes to discuss for this video. So you'll see that depends on whose side of story you're looking up for, you'll see that uh, the business are rising or the business are just dooming up there. Not only that, uh, this is quite a nice investing.com, it's a nice report up there about alphabet plunging. Here also, uh, if you look at this part here, it says in Azure, we are expecting revenue growth to be 26 to 27 percent at con uh, constant co uh, currency with an increasing contribution from AI. Now, we all have been looking at from the perspective that who is leading the AI, but ultimately for the companies, the AI is driving more customer to their cloud and hence people are using it. But you should also uh, give the fact that companies are not migrating, they are preferring new services to be on micro, uh, on the Microsoft platform. So if somebody's platform is a already on the AWS or Google, they're having that, but for the newer services or services which are tightly coupled with AI, they are preferring the Azure. And probably one of the reason could be OpenAI, uh, not just OpenAI, I'll walk you through with a couple of more notes that I've collected. I think this is a good, interesting take that you should have. So this is from the Microsoft annual report and all of that. If you read all of this, I won't consume too much of your time, but look at this. Uh, I have highlighted a few notes for you, and it says, the Microsoft Cloud provides the best integration across the tech stack while offering openness, improve, and blah, blah stuff. Uh, being a global cloud, Azure uniquely offers hybrid consistency, developer productivity, AI capabilities. Uh, the marketing hype which is there with the open AI and especially the chat GPT and everything, there is a GPT there. Uh, Microsoft provides you out of the box solutions and companies are loving, absolutely loving to use that. And for that, when the business meeting happens with the Azure guys, uh, the higher level CTOs and CXOs, they just say, hey, let's do it. And since you are so tightly coupled, that's a deal done. Let's shake hand and have the solution integrated. And then developers, for developers, it's not usually a choice. It is being set of instruction. Hey, we are going to use this. That's it. Uh, this is how it happens, actually. So not only the AI platform, the open AI platform, but if you scroll down a little bit, what's further helping down Google, uh, this Microsoft is a GitHub Copilot, a Visual Studio Code, a GitHub, these all are already dominating. And when surveys happen in, in the big companies, it's not about what developers need. They look for that already our developers are using VS Code, already our developers are using GitHub. Okay, let's use one more service from the same company. That's how the decisions are being made. So this is just one of the thing how things are actually happening. So it definitely avoids vendor lock-in and how things actually work on. There are so many essential things which when a big company makes a decision, so many big things. We want to avoid vendor lock-in, we want to have the cost efficiency, we want to have flexibility. Um, we also want to have best in breed solution, that's important. We don't want to have like whatever AWS offer we work on that. No, our solution is unique. Our company is unique. Our startup is unique. Give us the best solution and let's offer that solution to the mass, to the public. That's how it works. So right now, if Azure provides some of the out of the box service of AI and we can do that really nicely, why would I do that same thing on AWS and all of that? Tightly coupled, best of the breed. That's what I look. But one more thing that you should be aware of this is that companies all the time use multi-cloud service. And what happens in the production grade, and especially in the big corporates, is you don't have all the time these panels of Microsoft Azure or uh, AWS being opened up and you keep on monitoring service. No, nobody uses that. That's why some of the tools are a little bit way above the common discussion, what I have. So in this one, I will again bring back the Manage Engine, one of the leading product from India itself, and that gives me great, great uh, happiness that this is one of the product being developed by the Indian team. Uh, so hey, big shout out to the team who are working on the Manage Engine. If you watch this video on LinkedIn or somewhere, hey, a big shout out to you guys. Uh, so one of their product and service, you'll find that if you log in into 24 by 7, so by the way, they have like crazy in the IT operations going to 24 by 7, they have a generous free tier go into that. And one of the services which I have seen being used in like tons and tons of corporate. If you will be working in any corporate near future, you will be finding that. So one of the service that they offer is the cloud monitoring service. So notice here there is a servers and whatnot, cloud and all of that. So one of the service that they offer is if you go on to the server uh, up here, uh, there's so much of the clouds and all of that. So one of the service that I prefer, let's add a monitor 
and is the multi cloud monitoring solution. So let me just find that where this is. Okay, it's so much that sometimes it's even difficult to find which one. So this is cloud monitoring and we can see Amazon, Azure and all of that. So just go into any one of them. Uh, once you go in any one of them, it actually allows you to integrate that service. So by the way, they give you full of the, that, how you can access and what all services you can work on with that. Uh, this I found a little bit crazy when the first time I saw it, like, hey, somebody built a solution where I, on the single dashboard, I can monitor multiple solutions and services. I was like, oh man, why, why I didn't think of that. That's, that's a great, uh, but again, they are really big, gigantic uh, company to actually work on with that. Uh, so notice here, just like that, we have Azure, um, Amazon, Google Cloud Platform. So which, whichever you want to monitor, they allow you to monitor that. And by the way, uh, you can actually just... Uh, look for a quick help. They have in, uh, great demos as well. So when the corporate talks happen, they actually shows you the demo of these kinds of services and that's how the onboarding happen. But I would say that if you're working in any IT company or at a big scale, large scale companies, uh, just like Unicorn, or maybe somebody who is having multi-cloud services, I highly, highly recommend that remove some of your headaches and use services something like this. And by the way, Zoho is very, very affordable, very cheap compared to other services which I have personally used. Uh, I These days I don't use anything. I just say, hey, just go for this one. They are very cheap. And support is pretty awesome from their side. So I always say that, hey, go for that. So again, uh, I would love to say that go ahead and try these out. Uh, if you wish, just let me know in the comment section. I'll try to show you some of the live demos as well, how you can do. By the way, you can do some containerization monitoring and all of that. I have seen some of the other services, not good as this one. So uh, again, uh, nothing personal here, but just the product is good. It's made from India. That's why. So in case you know anybody who is from the Manage Engine team or Site24 by 7 team, uh, tag them, send them this video and give them a big shout out that, hey guys, you are doing an amazing work right from India, from one of the best company, my favorite one, Zoho, and uh, love this. But again, coming back onto the part, I would highly, highly recommend you, I'll give all these links in the description section, to at least take a look on these reports and study about this. This will give you a broader perspective as a software engineer on the other side of the picture that how these decisions are being taken and being made, that how companies are choosing, why does the market share of Azure is increasing? This is important. As a developer, your job is not to just write code, it's to understand the problem so that you can deliver better solution and you should know the better tools which are available to you. Maybe the tool is in Azure, maybe the tool is in AWS. So development and being an engineer is not just about writing code or fighting over JavaScript or React or Python and all of that. It's about knowing these things as well. And I am very, very interested in that. I spend a lot of time in reading these things and what's happening in the market. Uh, again, if you enjoyed this video, did like this video, uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up, uh, hit that like button onto this video. Yes, the like button should be glowing by now. Another use case of the AI product. Uh, I hope you have noticed whenever I say hit that like button, the like button glows out. So it's pretty nice there. Uh, anyways, I'll leave all the links in the description section. Uh, go ahead and check them out. These are all professional grade services and professional grade uh, articles, which you should be reading up. So that is it for this video. Hope you have enjoyed this. And by the way, I am also running a React series on the same channel. I hope you are enjoying that. And yes, the frequency, I'll try to increase that. Uh, that is it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.